The Transformers Generations Guidebook 2024 has been released, and inside it, we got a very, very cool interview with longtime Takara Tomi designer and Transformers designer Hironori Kobayashi san. Uh, this guy has been within the Takara and Hasbro ranks for easily more than 25 years now. And he's, for, for most people, they know him as uh, Mr. Masterpiece. He designed the very first MP01 Optimus with uh, Aaron Archer. He was also the big man behind Alternators and Binal Tech. You know, big part of that uh, legendary six man team with Aaron Archer that kick started pretty much the whole Armada and Micron Legend universe and was behind many of those designs and would go on to do stuff, of course, with the Unicron trilogy. Very important part, important part of the Transformer world from a design standpoint. And he did an interview with Generations Guidebook 2024 uh, talking about extensively what Transformers Missing Link is how it was created, as well as the future going forward with the Transformers Missing Link brand, which is going to be the most important thing to talk about here with us today. And uh, yeah, so he talked about pretty much how it all came to be the origin of it. And it really started back in 2002 in Takara in Japan, when he was just kind of messing with his old G1 convoy figure at his desk and adding extra articulation and parts to the figure to make a more modern version. Keep in mind that Kobayashi-san was the man behind Sideburn, a.k.a. Speedbreaker, of the original car robots, Robots in the Skies line. So he was the man behind making a car and having a robot mode with a million ball joints on it and the craziness from that. And that was his, his little masterpiece in his own sense. And he was kind of going like, well, maybe we could do something like that with a, a G1 convoy and give him a super articulated kind of thing here with the original toy. Now, also keep in mind, this was in 2002, two years before we'd even see our very first masterpiece figure in MP01 Optimus Prime convoy, if you will. So he was messing with this idea back then. And he even says here, uh, in a lot of ways, what he was trying to like put together was what could have been, dare I say, what Masterpiece would have become maybe in one different way or form, a super articulated, updated version of those modern classic characters. Again, also, we would not have the Binal Tech line at that moment in 2002 either. So he was really playing with this idea, oh, maybe we could do this, and maybe this will be what that Masterpiece line will be. Well, once Masterpiece did debut... In 2024, with MP01 Convoy and the 20th anniversary Optimus Prime here in the West, the concept that Kobayashi put together was, as he quote, hidden away and shelved not to be shown to the public, and that was that. And we would go on to see the modern masterpiece line that we know today that has been prevalent still to this very day more than 20 years later. And while the masterpiece line existed to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Transformers, what would we would do to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Transformers? And that's where Kobayashi-san decided to dust off that old concept that was in the vault and thus bring about the return of his old idea, now called The Missing Link. So for people that aren't familiar with Transformers Missing Link, we got two releases of that in the past. Uh, we had two different convoys, uh, one in a more animation accurate, one in a more toy accurate kind of deco and shaping. And uh, again, super articulated versions of those old G1 toolings. We also got a Bumblebee and a Cliff Jumper afterwards that also got new toolings and added weapons and articulation. Again, what do they do? It's new toolings, it's new joints and articulation, it's added weapons and accessories, but still while keeping true to that original g1 toy packaging right down to the foam styrofoam trays the trading card that the japanese versions came with the tech spec with the clear you know red reader decoder like all of that was maintained and kept true to quote kobayashi san as he said in this interview the one rule that we had that we wanted to adopt is we decided to adopt a policy that we avoid any changes that might disrupt the sense of nostalgia so that was kind of it, where he just really wanted to keep something that was true to the original product, but at the same time, you know, improving it 
for a modern audience. And that's what we have with Missing Link right now. Now, he was asked, like, you know, what are some examples of stuff that you would do to future product if you, you know, had those opportunities and what would be those goals? And he gave a very interesting one here. He said he gave an example of what he would do with Missing Link moving forward. And he used an example of like the tooling of G1 toys that could be improved because of the flaws of the originals. He gave an example of Generation 1 1985 Triple Changer Astro Train and how he would fix the leg extensions of the original toy when you transform it for robot mode because the original toy, because of how that worked, was the, the legs would extend and they would pretty much hold together because of friction and that's something that over time, after you transform it, it wears away and then it would just wouldn't hold anymore. So that would be one thing is that whatever that toy would be that he'd be tackling, he'd also be fixing some of those issues that existed with the original toy just from a design standpoint. Uh, he said that he wants to keep the bots fun and simple to transform. He imagines, you know, Optimus Prime would be your desk bot that you would keep on your desk that you'd flip back and forth between modes. And the Bumblebee and the Cliff Jumper would be a pocket bot that you could keep in your pocket and take it with you and pull it out when you want to keep yourself distracted or something, I guess. So I kind of like that concept, too. Um, you know, he, he sees this as the, the, the convoy optimus. He sees that as the final G1 convoy that you would need in your collection of that original G1 toy. He says, sure, there will probably be new and more impressive convoy and Optimus Prime toys in the future. But this one should feel a cap on your collection in one sense. So that's pretty cool, you know, that he kind of sees that this could be the ultimate Optimus for your collection in a lot of ways, just like he envisioned all those years ago when that potentially could have been Masterpiece. So then the question comes up, what is next for Masterpiece? So he says here, our vision is to develop not only car robots, but also expand the series to include a wider range of characters. So not just stuff that turns into cars and vehicles. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean gun Megatron? <laughs> That's not a vehicle. Uh, you know, do we count jets as vehicles? I would imagine so. So you, you fall out of the vehicle category with generation one and you go more into beasts and, you know, role play items like the, you know, tape cassettes and guns and stuff. So in the microscopes, so it does that, you know, tease out a gun Megatron. Seems like the natural direction, like we've always said. You got to have your Emperor of Destruction to go up against your Supreme Commander truck guy on your desk for your desk battles, like, you know, he says here with his desk bots. So that's one thing. He also said here, and I quote, Missing Link isn't just about adding more joints. As the name suggests, it's a project designed to complete the unexplored aspects of Transformers. What you're seeing right now only represents half of what Missing Link is. The true essence of the project still lies ahead, and we are actively working on how to shape it. So that's a very loaded one, that we've only truly seen half of what it is in terms of its essence and what they're trying to sell here. I mean, unexplored as aspects of Transformers? You know, are we talking like, Missing Link G1 style Beast Wars characters with beast modes, like a Cheetor, but done if he, you know, if he came out in G1 and that simplicity of design, but with crazy articulation. I don't know. Missing Link versions of characters from Generation 1 that didn't get Generation 1 toys back then, maybe? Like, let's say a DevCon with a classic version of that. Or RC, are we going to dig up that old RC prototype and kind of make a modernish kind of version? that still has the essence of Generation 1. And speaking of prototypes, how about the king of all prototypes from Generation 1? Maybe a Missing Link Unicron based off of that 86 Unicron prototype? Ooh, that's that's definitely a big one if that is something that would happen. But that that what this tells us more than anything is Missing Link is not just something for the 40th anniversary. It's something that's here to stay and has future plans to happen at some point, much like how Masterpiece, even though it was originally labeled as 20th Anniversary Optimus Prime, it evolved into something that ended up being a 25-year-plus ongoing, still to this very day, line of Transformers that we all celebrate and love. And it sounds like Missing Link is also going to continue that trend and be something that'll be moving forward for an alternative source of design and creativity, as well as a good place to stick some really good ideas. 
So we will see what's, what will happen with that. He says here, they have plans to reveal and tease more at upcoming events and other opportunities. So please stay tuned for that. So that's pretty cool from Kobayashi-san. Again, the whole interview is uh, in the Generations 2024 guidebook. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff. So let me know what you think about all of this. I mean, man, I mean, if we get like, if we get like a, the, the Unicron, mm, 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 mm. That's going to be crazy. That is going to be crazy. And then the gun Megatron's a given. I mean, that's the one I feel like that's the natural direction for a, for a missing link character. You got to go with the, the big bad to go with the big good. So let me know what you think. And uh, thanks again for listening to the Transformer Slag podcast. And we'll talk to you very soon in the near future because it's going to be a very busy week in the world of Transformers. Transformers.